All right, so this is going to be a special episode with tasting notes only. Uh, these two Belgian beers here I brewed over a year ago. So as we all well know, bottle conditioning a beer can cause dramatic changes in its overall flavor profile, oftentimes very much so for the better. Both of these beers that I have here are Belgian beers that I have had sitting in the bottle for well over a year. The Quad, which is here on my left, your right, I brewed in the October time frame of 2018, and it was ready around the holidays, and you'll see a card pop up here where you can check out the video for that brew day. Sorry for all the annoying Christmas music. Anyway, that beer is now well over a year old, and the Saison here, in fact, is well older than the Quad. In fact, I brewed that sometime in the spring-summer time frame of 2018. And, uh, in a minute, you'll be able to see that card notification pop up here as well for that brew day. Both of these were brewed when my channel is relatively young, so uh, do forgive any of the terrible edits that were in those videos, but uh, you will see the system that I made them on is completely different than the system I'm making beer on now. It's also going to be interesting to see if there's any sort of flavor changes I might be able to perceive from older beer that I brewed a long time ago versus beer that I would brew now. I'm really excited to crack into both of these right now and uh, just kind of see what the uh, changes are like and hopefully they are for the better. I've had some bottle conditioned beers that have just gotten really bad. So hopefully the Saison's not one of those. I'm not worried about the quad. Uh, so the Saison was called Summer's End Saison. I think it's about, yeah, 7.9% ABV according to my label uh, and 24 IBUs. Yeah, I remember this one being particularly good. Um, I hope it hasn't continued to ferment and I hope we don't have an explosion. So. Let's just uh, see what happens when we pour this. That decent carbonation. <laughs> wow, so epically clear and looks like really pretty heavily carbonated but uh that there's no head retention at all it's just gone completely it looks like a cider um actually it smells like a cider huh it smells very tart appley i'm not really getting too much of a yeast ester coming out of this um but uh yeah, appearances wise, you know, it's a it's a crystal clear, uh, kind of medium yellow, somewhat almost golden color, but a little paler than that. Uh, yeah, absolutely no head retention. Oh wow! <laughs> that <laughs> that's good. This is in fact the last bottle of that, so I was kind of saving it for a special occasion, but I figured a video is a special occasion enough, and I didn't know if it was going to be good or not, but this actually has really done quite well in the bottle. Hmm. All right. Getting a very, very apple cider-like, hard cider-like um, kind of flavor out of this. It is bone dry. Like, <laughs> wow. So, like, you have to keep drinking it to get flavor out of it. It is bone dry. Wow. Almost like a, it's like a cross between an apple wine and a champagne almost, but I never, I don't think I got the apple last time, but, uh, really not much malt profile to this at all. Very clean flavor. No alcohol warming. No, no off flavor notes that I can pick up on. I don't know if the cidery effect might possibly be an off flavor, but I believe that's more of a yeast kind of effect. I don't know if I used sugar in this or not to bump up ABV. I don't think I did. Yeah, maybe I did. Yeah, this is like really, really dry, <laughs> but definitely enjoyable, very refreshing. Kind of wish it wasn't almost 8% ABV, but uh, you know, that's not too bad for something that's uh, it's pretty old. I'm pretty happy I popped that one up and I'm gonna enjoy this. Despite its lack of head retention, the carbonation on it is actually really strong. Um, it's very, very fizzy. Um, very, very strong carbonation bite. But uh, in the realms of what makes a Saison a Saison, this is uh, 
This is pretty good. It says on the dry farmhouse beer. If there was any hop character in this, it's definitely faded. Uh, yeah, definitely much more like a cider now than I remember, um, but really not in a bad way. This is, uh, this is quite tasty. And uh, I really do wish I had more than one bottle that I'd saved, but uh, oh well. Um, so with the Saison being a pretty surprising success, uh, I'm gonna move on to the darker and boozier one of the two, which is my quad here. Um, so let's go ahead and pop this one open. No excess carbonation once again, that's good. Okay, so unlike the other one, this one actually has a head that sticks around. <laughs> Happy with it uh, being a nice, you know, somewhat tan colored head. A um, lot stronger aroma on this one than the Saison, which is interesting. It's good. A lot of plum and raisin. Yep. Plum and raisin. I think I get a little bit of spice in there as well, like some cinnamon. Um, cinnamon or ginger that comes through on the nose. Now for the first swig of this beast. Huh. Let's change. For the better. Uh, <laughs> Sorry to leave everyone hanging there. <laughs> no, it's that's mellowed. Hmm. When I was relatively younger, there used to be a pretty strong um, alcohol note. Like you, it wasn't the hot kind of fusel alcohols. Uh, it was just a very strong presence of alcohol. Um, in the uh, the flavor of the beer, that's gone, which is awesome because that leaves behind this really rich palette of plum, uh, raisin, and dark caramel toffee. Hmm. Dark, dark cherry, as well, and like almost like a yeah, like a black cherry, which is not something I got before. Oh, a biscuit. Hmm. Ginger is coming through in the flavor. No, no cinnamon in the flavor. The initial uh, flavor of pear that I apparently wrote down on the bottle uh, is not there, not at all. Uh, so that is that is faded. There is a burnt molasses sorts of sweetness to this. Um, it, I think, had a relatively high finishing gravity, if I remember correctly. Um, somewhere like 1018, 1020. Um, and it was very, very... Actually, you know what? I have my brew book right here. Let me find out what the finishing gravity was. Gravity was 1016, actually. That's not what I would expect. Tastes a little bit sweeter than 1016. Um, yeah, so dark candy sugar is given that, uh, that kind of dark burn caramel kind of sweetness at the back half. Um, I might have used a little too much of that. Or maybe that's the special B that's coming through in it, in the intense, uh, dark caramel. Could be that. Anyway, that's not 
So, and I'm sure you can tell that's probably not my favorite thing about this. Uh, it is a little cloyingly sweet in the back, um, which I don't think it used to be, but uh, maybe my palate's changed, but uh, it's not. It's smoother. Uh, it's sweeter, perceptibly. Um, but maybe that's because I just had that Saison beforehand, and that Saison was crushingly bone dry. So perhaps uh, the sweetness I'm perceiving is only because it's being compared to the Saison. Hmm. I mean, it's no St. Bernardus, but uh, it's quite good. <laughs> I mean, it's uh, it hasn't gotten worse. I'm just noticing things that I didn't notice before. And same with a Saison. Uh, it's just been a longer period of time with a Saison, and this is a beer that I think I like put more thought into. Um, really good, though. I mean, overall, both of these beers are way, way better than I expected that they would be. Uh, very, very happy with the way that they've aged. This is just a very rich and complex beer, and it's one of the reasons why I love quads. There's a little bit of a tobacco note in there, too. So anyway, if you've got really strong, complicated beers that take a long time to fully mature their flavors, I highly recommend bottling them over kegging them. Uh, so that you have situations like these where you can pull bottles out of a closet after a year, two years, and just see how they've changed and the matured. It is well worth it. Uh, these beers have gotten better, in my opinion and more interesting. So, especially if you haven't had them in a while. Yeah, so a keg beer, for example, you might drink it relatively frequently. You're probably gonna get used to what that flavor profile is like. And it probably won't even change that much over the duration of the time that you actually have the keg. Uh, however, with bottles, you can keep them in places in your house that you deliberately hide them from yourself. Uh, and, and then you will find them at later points in time and you will pour them out and just, just have a really, really good time uh, dissecting the flavors as they have changed and boy have they changed. It's definitely one of the more rewarding and fun parts of home brewing and it definitely makes all of the work that goes into bottling worth it uh, 100% especially for these big beers. All right so one quick channel announcement uh, over the last six and a half months I have been aging a Russian Imperial Stout that I brewed in this video. Uh, sorry for the horrible music once again. I have been aging that beer in the fermenter for six plus months in order to let those uh, strong acrid roasted malt flavors mellow out and develop and just like in the bottle for these Belgian beers, those flavors are uh, blending and becoming more intricate and complex together. So we have a better beer in our hands and we're able to actually enjoy it when it hits its stride. Anyway, the point is I am bottling that very soon. You guys are in for a treat because not only am I bottling the regular base version of the beer, but I'm gonna have a little bit of an adjunct experiment uh, to go along with it. Not just one adjunct. There are gonna be multiple split batches of uh, different secondary fermentation style adjuncts added to the beers. So there's gonna be a couple very experimental uh, videos coming to the channel very soon, so stay tuned. Uh, if you like the video, please consider hitting the like button. It does help my channel out quite a bit in terms of making it relevant to the YouTube community according to the algorithm that goes on. Uh, things like subscriptions and comments also help a lot as well. So if you like watching me do these things on a regular basis and like talking about beer, tasting old beer, brewing new beer, uh, doing all things beer, please consider subscribing and hitting the bell notification icon so you can see like on your phone a notification pop up whenever I upload a new video um, and you can be the first ones to watch it. So let me know in the comments section below if you've uh, kept some bottles around for a long period of time and uh, checked them out after a year or two and seen the flavor differences. And if you want to talk about what those beers were, I'd love to talk with you all about that. To my current subscribers, thank you for your support. Your continued support means quite a bit to me and I've enjoyed this whole process because of you. So one more frequent updates about what I'm doing and uh, what's going on with my brewing stuff well before it hits YouTube. Please consider checking out my Instagram. It's at the apartment brewer. Uh, on Instagram. I will tend to post there a little more frequently than I post to YouTube. YouTube's typically every couple weeks, Instagram's typically every couple days. Last but not least, if you check out that description box below, you will see a compiled list of equipment that I use not only to make these beers, but also every other beer 
uh, that I've made since then in the year after these, where I've grown quite a bit and learned quite a few things, uh, and my system actually has changed dramatically. So check that stuff out. I've provided links to Amazon down there where you can purchase these things for yourself if you wish to. Um, but be aware that if you do click on one of those links and end up purchasing something, I do earn a very small commission at no additional cost to you. Uh, it does go back into the channel and support future brewing endeavors. If you do choose to purchase something, please make sure you're doing your research so you get what you actually need uh, and not just buy it based off of what I said. So without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and finish off the rest of these beers and uh, I will catch you in the next one. So, cheers. Cheers.